Well, hello. Hello, again. Again, it's you again. It's you again. <laughs> uh, episode 15. 15, I believe. All right. And we have some No. Questions. You know what? We were wrong. It was episode 16 last time, so it's episode 17. 17. Yeah, it's progressing forward. So, of the stupid podcast. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duh. What an intro. Yes. Whatever. They're used to it. I put like nice intro, like uh, written. Yeah, you're thing, nice so these days. You're fancy. I am. Saves us. You're a fancy you man. Yep. Yes, I am. All right. Are you ready for the uh, first question? I was born ready. What are the benefits of using strong fit principles for endurance versus traditional endurance training? Right. So I like the question a lot. Right. So endurance training. So um, um, there's going to be a different aspect to that. A very important aspect to endurance training is a mistake I see happening all the time is testing versus building. Most conditioning workouts are actually uh, done with the mindset of testing yourself, of seeing how hard you can push the cardio and things like this. But that is like going for a max two reps on a lift. That's good to test yourself, but it's not necessarily the best way to build yourself, right? So uh, a lot of time you'll see in most training programs, in order to build, you need to do two, three sets of, you know, five to six reps or, or things like that, because there's the, you know, the base of the structural pyramid. If I do your carries, I can't do a thousand pounds every week. It's mostly runs of 800 at 80%, 85% run trying to go fast that's how you build that capacity to one day go to to a thousand it's going to be exactly the same thing with endurance you're not supposed to test yourself at every single training session the best way is to build yourself so what do i mean by that that is exactly so talking about strong fit principle what i try to explain with the q minus one training the importance of not going past that uh quit past that moment where you're disengaged mentally. So very important strong field principles is the state you're in, not the mental state, the state of your body, nervous system, all that stuff. The best way to build cardiovascular capacity, I believe, is to make is to introduce the stress of movement, the higher heart rate, things like this, but while remaining present within the stress, right? Um, it's actually Huberman talked about it in a way that I thought was very interesting because he reflected exactly what I've been saying all the time, especially with the Q minus one. The idea of the Q minus one is that you get to that moment where you, of the test, where you actually starting to go toward flight, where in order to keep pushing or to stay at the same pace for longer period of time, you need to disengage mentally. To do that, you're switching to a passive state where you're just enduring the pain and that's the flight mechanism. And that is a bad idea. Now you're testing your capacity to endure pain. That is not the best way to deal with uh, a workout. Why? Because in a workout, you have to stay active. Imagine if you're building for a fight or whatever, you need technique, you need to be, the, the mindset has to be right. You need to be very, very active to be able to perform at anything. So that was, uh, some of the background of the Q minus one is like, where is that line past which I cannot maintain this space without disengaging? And at that particular spot, I'm going to work very, very hard in staying present within the discomfort. That to me is the, ex the best place to build cardiovascular capacity. And I think this is reflected by what they call the zone one, zone two, zone three training that you, so you see in cardiovascular uh, training. I believe they base it on heart rate, they base it on physiological components, where I think it is not enough that it should also be based on the state that you're in, state of your nervous system. So it might be hard to test what the state of the nervous system is, but they are telltale signs of where you are, not just mentally, but physically. So you go 10 minutes of the Q minus one on the airline. If you start to make faces you, uh, like this, that means you're starting to let yourself go too far toward the flight, which will take you to flight. Stay present, remain in control of your face. Don't make faces. Focus on what is in front of you, but focus on remaining present within that discomfort. Whatever number you're at, 
for that particular workout, try to spend the least amount of mental energy possible to stay exactly at that number while remaining calm, in control, present. Yeah. The more you start to go <laughs> like this, the more you'll notice your energy is being wasted where it shouldn't be in at the same level. So and it's okay to accept the pain you're feeling at that that's moment. That's the whole point. Like the uh, whole point is to not just, uh, is to accept the pain, to accept that you are not comfortable, yeah. you are not in a place of comfort, and yet you remain present, cognizant of the discomfort, present within it, yet pushing the machine. That's where success is. It is based on your state. So if you just run or do whatever, Ignoring that, making faces, just being or drifting off mentally and being six miles away just so that you can endure the pain. You are not developing your system yourself as well as you should be. Yeah, I think uh, that's when I uh, did my running classes and I only coached endurance uh, yeah, runners. Only endurance, yeah. Was always my first thing is accept that it's not comfortable like let's right. not pretend that this is gonna be yeah. a yoga session because yeah. it's not i think a lot of endurance training is really starts with just that is already 10 steps forward and but you're gonna push so much yeah. more yeah, if yeah. you accept the pain but accepting does not mean th and that's the where the problem is is most of the time accepting pain means disengagement yeah and that is not the case. You cannot disengage from the pain. You have to accept it. It is not the same. You cannot passively let yourself drift off to not feel the pain. That's that is where the mistake is being made. You have to actively stay within your pain, within your discomfort, and yet move forward. Mm -hmm. That is how you're gonna build your cardiovascular system the best because you're gonna have a cardiovascular system that is based on presence on where you need to be in order to perform when you disengage and you go you drift and everything you are not applying yourself 100 percent to what you do you will not be able to build performance from there because you compete the way you train well Im i was going to say imagine training constantly disengage what's going to happen in a race you're going to be disengaged what gonna, yeah. what's going to happen if you have to push that extra what happens if you cannot disengage because you're so nervous because our people are watching you because there's people around or whatever so then that threat will make you stay within the the moment where you will be able to disengage because the environment has changed and now you're going to have to be cognizant of that discomfort without being able to let go it will, it will crush you and if you are already into a flight state because you're disengaged how are you going to go to that fight to win the race i've seen a end? i've seen a marathon competitor at the olympics uh, two olympics ago who was at least a podium right uh person who she gave up within five kilometers you could see on her face she was in so much pain she was like this and, and it wasn't because of her cardiovascular capacity it was because suddenly the the size of the event the olympics the people around the competition the people cheering all that changed her environment to a point where she was put in a state where she was not in control of her own capacities and that wrecked four years of training for that so do not disengage when you do cardio. Do not go into a passive state where you just don't want to feel the pain. You need to be able to stay present within that discomfort, to accept that, and yet to push through because those are the qualities you're going to need when you need to push. So you need to push cardiovascular capacity at a Q minus one level, exactly what I talked about, but also make sure that every training session is not a test. It's a buildup, which is why the Q minus one works so well because it is not a test. You have to know what that, that moment is where the voice switch to either dis disconnect or rage or whatever, and don't go there. Yeah. Stay within that Q minus one approach where you build cardiovascular capacity while staying present within the discomfort. 
this will yield you the best results by a mile and you will see that you have to do way less it's like there is this way thing in less energy spending. training where it's always more is better more 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 yeah. but it's not true yeah like if you're gonna be ending up in a free state every time you do a training session you're not gonna make the same progress as maybe doing a little bit less but but finishing the, right the session state. this is why they say uh, do more is because you are in such a passive state that you're just gonna have to pound higher and higher and higher volume to get a, a little bit of a better physiological response. Because what you're not taking into account is all the nervous system, all the fight mode and everything that have their own physiological aspect that you're not tapping into because you're in the wrong state. You cannot be in flight. And for cardio, because there's so many reps and it's so long, it's so easy to go in flight, right? On the, on the short reps, you get to focus when it's like a two hour run it's very easy to drift but you have to stay you have to stay focused and i think still that Present. sometimes sometimes it's it's especially if you're training for really long distances to do more like a system where you do a little bit shorter so you stay engaged but q minus one reps, q minus one should decide like the time you run and the speed at which you run in the sets right yeah if you disengage one way or the other which means going too far mentally uh, into rage to continue or completely letting go mentally either way you're disengaging it's not it's not the bracket you want to be in so it's not enough to measure heart rate we have to measure state and that you have to do mentally yourself you have to know when you're disengaging or when you are being within the discomfort the key is be within the discomfort and remain there as long as you can that is the key awesome Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you next week.